totally remember the first time I had these. I was like, whoa, what is this flavor? What are these? I'm telling you right now, this kibbe recipe is incredible. And we're doing it in partnership with my friends over at the American Lamb Board. And I know you're foodie, so I'm sure you've had a similar experience when dining out. I went to this Middle Eastern style restaurant on the north side of Chicago, and I was like, I have no clue what to order. And I didn't have a lot of experience with Middle Eastern style food at this point, like 12, 15 years ago. And I was like, just give me the most popular things that people order. So I got some kofta and kibbe, and I was blown away at how delicious the kibbe was. I was like, what is this? This is next level food. The best part about it, it's actually really simple to make. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. To start off though, we need to make a Lebanese seven spice blend. Do not skip this. This is where a lot of the flavor comes from. Sound good? Let's cook. So in a large frying pan, we're gonna add in two tablespoons of allspice berries, one tablespoon of peppercorns, next one broken up cinnamon stick, one tablespoon of cloves, two tablespoons of coriander seeds, two tablespoons of cumin seeds, and last but not least, one broken up whole nutmeg. We're going right over to our cooktop. We are gonna turn the heat down to low. What we're trying to do here is make the flavor more intense, and that's what cooking it over low heat is going to do. We're going to constantly stir it for about five to seven minutes. Now, at this point, we're gonna remove it from the cooktop. I'm gonna go over to my spice grinder. If you don't have one of these, no sweat. Just use a mortar and pestle. Add all that goodness in there. Press it down until it is finely ground. It should look just like this at the end. Now, obviously, you're going to have some leftover. We're just going to simply set it to the side at this point. Definitely toast those spices. They'll become so aromatic, so much more flavorful. But not everyone has whole spices laying around. If you have all of these ground, put them in a bowl, give them a little stir, boom, you're finished. All right, now for the kibbe. What we do need to know is that there are two different parts of this, an outside shell and inside filling. We're gonna make both of them sort of in tandem because some stuff sits while we can prep up everything else. Here we go. I've got two pounds of fine number one bulgur wheat. This is gonna go into our kibbe outside shell. What you do need to do is soften it up and you do this by adding in about one and a half cups of water or just until it's covered on the top like this. I use a spoon, give a little stir. What we're gonna do is just set it to the side until it absorbs all that water. Now, let's head over to a pan. Time to get to that filling. We are gonna add in a quarter cup of pine nuts over low heat. We wanna toast this up. It's gonna bring out a lot of flavor. Once it's nice and brown, just set it to the side in a little dish. We'll use it in just a little bit. Now, return that pan to low to medium heat. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of olive oil and then two peeled and small diced yellow onions. You could use a white, you could use a sweet, up to you. We want to occasionally stir this. We don't need a full 45 minute caramelization, but can you commit to 20 minutes? I'm telling you the flavor will be so much more intense. While this is cooking, let's talk about these two pounds of ground lamb. Lamb is such a great lean meat. It's incredibly tender. It's jam packed with protein, zinc, and B12 among many others. It may also help increase your immune system. And of course, it's loaded with delicious flavor. It's one of my all time favorite proteins. Along with amazing nutritional properties and taste, by purchasing American lamb, you directly support the farmers and ranchers in all of your surrounding communities. Let's take the lamb back over to the cooktop, have a look at our onions, give them a quick stir. They look fantastic, they smell great. Do not miss out on this, going to make this that much better. Let's crank the heat to high. We're gonna add in one pound of the ground lamb, set the other pound to the side. There are so many great ways to cook lamb, but I absolutely love pan searing it. Getting that nice little brown on the outside will bring out so much flavor. Once it's cooked to 160 degrees Fahrenheit internally, we are going to add in one tablespoon of that seven spice blend that we blended up, followed up with seasoning with salt. We're going to add in those toasted pine nuts. Next, we're going to add in two tablespoons each of chopped fresh basil and chopped fresh mint. We're going to stir this until it is completely combined. And then at this point, just set it to the side cannot stress this enough. You have to try that filling. Does it need more of that seven blend spice? Does it need more salt? It's so important to get this right, because guess what? After that filling's in there, there's no going back. You can't season it after it's already cooked. So take the time to do it. Only take seconds, all right? 
we're going to finish up that outside shell. Let's break out that bulgur wheat. You can see it's absorbed all the water. This is perfect. What I like to do is just grab a spoon and sort of break it all up because we're going to transfer it right over to a food processor. The next thing we're going to add are two peeled and roughly chopped yellow onions. Again, you could use whites or sweets here as well. Let's add the top onto the food processor. What we're looking to do here is pulse it until the onions are finely minced in with the bulgur. Don't expect the bulgur to be finely minced, but once it gets to this consistency, perfect. We're going to add in the remaining one pound of lamb, followed up with 15 fresh mint leaves, 15 fresh basil leaves, Next, we're going to add in one and a half tablespoons of that seven spice blend, two teaspoons of sea salt. Let's add that top back on there and pulse it until it's combined and broken up. Now, if you're seeing that it's not really moving around that much, you may need to add a tablespoon or two of water to sort of rehydrate it, get it to moving. The goal here is to get it in a ball rolling around just like this. Absolutely perfect. Now, if it's a little too wet, you can add a tablespoon or two of cornstarch. What I like to do is transfer it over to a bowl just because the blade is in the food processor. Don't want to cut myself. And if you find that it's too hot because it's been processing too long, just pop it in the refrigerator for five to 10 minutes. Now watch carefully because here's how we stuff each of them up. You're going to need a small bowl of cold water and or oil or both. This will help so it doesn't stick to your hands. Make sure you do have clean hands. We're going to dab them with a little bit of water. Now what we want to do is take some of that kibbe outside shell mixture we're gonna roll it until it's about the size of a golf ball. Now dip your thumb in one, and what we do is push down in the center by rolling it. The goal here is to hollow out the inside, so it's like a hollow cone. Once you get to this stage, perfect. We're going over to our other lamb filling. We are gonna get a bunch of that goodness, and we're putting it in there, pack it in there. Make sure these are really, really full. It will make them that much more delicious. Now sort of pull everything up and that outside shell will stretch. Don't worry that it'll break. It will not. Once you get it to this consistency, you may need a little bit more water so that it does not stick. You want to sort of cup roll it. What this is going to do is make it that classical shape, which is sort of a cone on each side, like a cylinder, almost like a perfect quenelle like this. Set it to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Do this until all of the ingredients are completely used up. Next, we're going to start cooking. And it is a little bit of a labor of love, but it's not difficult. We're just putting that filling inside the shell and shaping them. That is it. Now it's time to fry them up. Head over to our cooktop with a large frying pan or rondo. We're going to add a few cups of neutral flavored oil. Turn the heat to medium or about 350 degrees. Once the oil is hot, we are going to add in as many kibbe as possible without overcrowding. You probably need to cook this in two batches. After about two and a half to three minutes or until they become perfectly golden brown, we're going to give them a little flip. And remember, all we're cooking is that outside shell. The inside filling has already been cooked. That will be warm. The outside will be cooked. Absolutely perfect. After that time, we are going to take them out and let them completely drain on a sheet tray that has a rack on it. And I'm telling you right now, these kibbe by themselves are incredibly delicious. No joke. And you can eat them as an appetizer or as an entree, you name it. But classically, there is a garlicky yogurt sauce that does go with it. I don't want you to miss out on it. It's very, very easy to make. Here's how we do it. In a medium-sized sauce pot, we're going to add in two tablespoons of olive oil and then five finely minced cloves of garlic. We're going to cook this over low to medium heat for about two to three minutes or until it becomes a little bit brown and very fragrant. At this point, we're going to pour in four cups of whole milk yogurt. Don't use Greek yogurt. It's just a little bit too tangy for this recipe. Next, in a separate pourable container, we have one and a half cups of water. We're going to whisk in one third cup of cornstarch until it is combined. The next thing we're going to do is just pour it right over into that sauce pot. We are going to crank the heat onto high. We want to bring it to a boil. It's going to sort of activate that cornstarch. Continually whisk it. It will become really, really thick. At this point, we're going to pour in three quarters cup of cooked short grain rice to add a little bit of texture, season it well with salt, and then we're going to add in three tablespoons of finely minced fresh mint. Give it a little whisk, and then what you can do is add some of the cooked kibbe right in here and serve it up as is, or you can serve it to the side as a sauce, or you can completely chill it and serve it like that as well. And we're talking, this takes maybe an hour from start to finish to make. And we're bringing classic Middle Eastern restaurant quality food right to your own kitchen. You cannot beat that. 
and putting these fundamentals into practice, I'm telling you right now, this will go a long way into making other recipes. Don't miss it because it's all about elevating your everyday cooking. That's what it's always been about. Now, these are really, really easy to plate up. Let me show you how to do it. I like to just plate this up on a plate and of course serve it up with that sauce. And it's funny because there are so many different ways to make kibbe and everyone swears theirs is the only correct way to make it. But this my friends is absolutely delicious. And you'll absolutely impress whoever gets a chance to eat these, no joke. But if you're looking for an idea what to serve these up with, check out my Horia Tika salad. It is so good. You will get a lot of balance of the flavors with these kibbe. Don't miss out on it. I'll see you on there.